Welcome to part two of developing this style test I did for real estate developers. It's kind of like a fun side project. Um, in the previous video, we worked on uh, making this uh, header with this really neat uh, angled edge um, section. And uh, in this video, we're going to be doing the rest of the home page. So it's going to be a little bit more ambitious. Uh, we're going to be creating these uh, project grids with five images stacked neatly. Um, we're going to be doing this CTA where a uh, one line, uh, kind of like CTA where you can enter your name and um, I guess I should say email, <laughs> enter your email and uh, sign up for a newsletter. And then uh, this kind of like section for blogs um, with a nice image. And then finally, this really neat footer that has a um, kind of like breaking the grid and another angle cut. So I uh, really had fun working on this project. Hope it's informative and helpful for you. Feel free to visit the link up here and to see the site for yourself. I'll make sure to uh, upload the, um, uh, the view link for Webflow so you can kind of see uh, under the engine, if you will. And uh, um, let's get started. All right, so um, with my body selected, I'm gonna add a new section. Move it up above our dummy section. And let's go ahead and give it a section class. Um, so the way that I built this is because we have this um, angled edge header, um, this section is actually zero pixels away from the header but because there's all this space up here uh, there's enough white space that we don't really need to add any more uh, but there is white space necessary below so we're going to have to add that as 90 pixels of spacing um, at the bottom um, great and then we're going to have to add our container we previously built this container when we were doing the nav bar You'll see it's in the middle. It's 90% um, width, a max of 1,320 pixels. And then inside of that container, we're going to add a heading. And uh, we're going to give it a H2 class. And um, it's a Verda size 26. So we're going to select all, two, all H2. All right, if this lets me, uh, this often doesn't let me scroll up. I'm not sure the reason for that. Um, it is size 26. Um, line height of 42. And it's not bold, it's regular. And I believe it's our dark blue. This is project one. Um, oops, I wrote it out. All right, and then with H2 selected, I can just um, double click on paragraph and it's gonna add it right below. That's super helpful. And then just add my uh, text in there. And you'll notice that um, uh, it's spanning the entire width of the container. And I don't like for text to do that. I actually think um, I read somewhere, some UX article that um, kind of like the ideal max character width is 80 characters or something like that. Um, if you're thinking of like bootstrap or something like that, I usually try to keep um, paragraph text like this to no more than six or seven columns. Um, so we're just gonna add a max width, um, I forgot what it was here, 635. Max width of 635. Okay. And then um, you'll notice that there's now a section for these like badges and then for the view link project. And to make sure that these line up, we're going to wrap these elements and this element all on the same line. The way we do that is add a div block. And uh, we'll just call this flex box um, to column horizontal flex box um, and then we're just going to do space between actually and center so we'll name this instead of flex box to column space between okay 
and then um, we're gonna add a div block here and this is gonna be our uh, badge wrapper and then we're just gonna copy this text arrow link and paste it in there but um, I'm gonna get rid of the um, all the extra padding so uh, we'll do um, text um, arrow padding minimized so I'm gonna turn everything down to zero for now just to see what it looks like uh, I may add some back in later okay and then inside of this badge wrapper I'm gonna add um, piece of text and it's gonna say office and we'll call it badge okay um, I know that it's all caps let's zoom in nice and close and um, size 9 Let's do 1M, um, a whole lot of letter spacing. Um, I think it needs to be semi-bold. Okay, and then it's gonna have a background of the Alice Blue, I think. Zero, E, zero, E. Let's see what this is. Perfect. All right, and then this itself has a text color of the blue. And then we need to add some padding. Um, so five top and bottom and 10 on each side. All right, and then <laughs> we're gonna add some radius and I'm just gonna go up to 20 and see if that is sufficient. And it is, perfect. Okay, the last thing I'll do is add a little bit of margin right um, to push the next badge to the right 10 pixels. All right, so I'm just copying and pasting that. And then with my badge wrapper selected, I can flex it and uh, it's already set to the um, settings that I need. Let's go ahead and do commercial in New York City. New York City. All right. And um, uh, see, it's already kind of middle aligned with this piece of text. And then I think if we did our, um, see how the air kind of moves to the right? If we did our uh, interaction correctly, this will move to the right. Perfect. All right. I will say it feels like it's a little much. Um, we had it move 10. Let's just do five. Let's make it a little more subtle. Perfect. And um, the text for this is a view project. All right, then the next thing to do is uh, with the container selected, I'm gonna add another div block. And this is gonna be our um, photo grid wrapper. All right, guys, I had to uh, stop the video and just play around because um, I got into this little issue with the photo grid where it just wasn't working. And so I wanted to kind of play around with it uh, off the mic, so to speak. So I think I'm ready to retry this. So with the container selected, I'm going to add a new div block and call this photo grid wrapper. And then we're going to add um, another div child and call it a photo grid child and there's going to be two of them and with the wrapper we're going to flex it 
and make sure that align stretch is selected and uh, really any of these options doesn't matter. Then we're going to expand both options and uh, this one we're going to leave alone for right now. With the right hand side we're going to add um, and we'll call it a four grid photo container. We want four of these because there's four photos of course. So with this right hand child we'll just give it a combo class of four grid and um, uh, we're going to leave a line stretch on as well, justify start. And basically with this one, what we want to do is make sure that its basis is set to 50%. All right. And then with the parent element, the flex parent, we want to make sure wrap children is selected. And what that means is that um, if this, if the math of each um, element within the flex parent is more than 100%, then it cascades down to the next line. So by setting these to 50%, we're making sure that this one is cascading down to the next line. And so we've got a perfect grid of four right there. Then we're gonna give each grid container 15 pixels of margin on every side. All right, and now we're gonna add our images. I think the next one is airplane hangar one. Next one is the ceiling. And last one is um, uh, this one. All right, so this grid is perfectly laid out. It's 30 pixels between uh, the columns and 30 pixels below the rows. Uh, so that's perfect. On this side, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to add 15 pixels of margin. Um, but in the right hand grid, we're going to delete it. Because that's kind of like doing double duty, if you will. All right. And then, OK, so here's where I got into trouble is if I add this image, which, by the way, is the same ratio, um, so a 43 ratio. Uh, just the way that the way that this spacing works, the bottom edge of this is not going to be flush with this. Uh, it's just kind of like uh, a matter of the fact. And so, rather than doing all the math to figure out what the ratio needs to be to align perfectly with the bottom edge of this, I'm going to delete that and I'm going to add a div block. Call it featured photo. Set its width to 100% height to 100% and then um, set the background image with that featured image. All right, so now the bottom edge of this is perfectly aligning with this. Oops, I just realized it's untiling a little bit. So let's set it to cover, middle, do not tile. All right, there we go. The last thing we'll do is um, see how this left edge is not aligning with this. It's because of our 15 pixels of padding there. So with the photo grid wrap, which is the parent element for everything, we're just gonna give it minus 15 on either side. And that's lining perfectly with our left and right edges. And there's 30 pixels of margin to the top to move it away. All right, so that's our um, photo grid. Um, there needs to be a little bit of um, shadow uh, but that's kind of tedious so I'll add that later on and uh, basically if I go ahead and take this whole container or section I should say and duplicate it then we now have project 2 ready to go you just gotta change out the images change out the text change out the badges and uh, that's pretty much it all right, so in the last section of the video, we finished with this um, photo grid. Um, after I finished recording, I added the shadow, um, like I said, and just added this um, hover effect where the shadow kind of deepens. Um, so it kind of looks like the photos are rising up uh, when you scroll over them. And I also made them link blocks so that um, this uh, view project uh, CTA is quite subtle. So I wanted to make sure that the photos were also clickable and would take you to the project. So basically, um, 
inside of this project, there are six opportunities to get to the project page. So, so that's something to consider um, you know, when you want your users to go ahead and view case studies and things like that. They're on a separate page. Um, then I just copied and pasted that container and added our second series of photos. And now we're gonna add this kind of like CTA section and uh, we're gonna be using an SVG uh, to accomplish this shape. And then we're gonna add this little newsletter uh, input form. So pretty fun stuff. All right, so the first thing is, um, I noticed after the fact that I forgot about this gradient. So this section has an entire gradient attached to it where, um, uh, well actually I realized it's just this section. Okay, so what I should have done is, um, so this container, take off the 90 pixels and add it to the section. Okay, and then I'm gonna add, I'll just copy and paste the section and get rid of these containers. All right, so what that means is that now these, these projects are in their own section and that will let me add um, the gradient. So gradient. Um, we're gonna add it down here at the bottom. Uh, here it is. Uh, make sure that it's uh, 180 and it's gonna go from white. I'm just doing that. So, uh, I hate it when it does this. It turns into a solid color. <laughs> um, so it's gonna go Let's go ahead and add this color first. Oops. Um, I wonder if I already have it here somewhere. There it is. Uh, and then it's going to start off as white. So it's just kind of like a subtle um, effect so that we can start a brand new section down here. All right, and then with the body, gonna add a new section, move it above the dummy, and go ahead and call it section. And then we're gonna add our container. And then inside of the container, we'll add a, um, I guess we'll call it like a newsletter wrapper. Of course, I misspelled it. <laughs> um, all right, so let's look at the design file, kind of get our bearings a little bit. Um, so I think the first thing I'll notice is that we want everything to be aligned in the middle. So if I just simply do text align center, that should work. And then um, I'm going to add one more uh, div block and call it um, SVG wrapper. And you'll see why in a second. And then I'm gonna add a heading, make it H3. And then with all H3 tags, I'm pretty sure this is a Verda blue. Um, oops, I keep doing that, sorry. And it's a regular size 22. I'm not sure what the line height is. 28 is fine. And it's just normal. Okay. With the newsletter wrapper, um, I wanna go ahead and move it 120 pixels away from the top. And uh, this says get first dibs. paragraph and the paragraph will say this um, normally I give it like a maximum width and that kind of thing but the text is already um, fairly short so I think we don't have to do that and, uh, and then here's where I'm hoping what I mentioned before is gonna work <laughs> um, so I'm gonna add a background image and we're gonna make our SVG, oh, I haven't uploaded it yet. I just called it chevron.svg. 
Uh, we're going to have it say contain at the top. Okay. Um, and then all we have to do is add a little bit of padding um, to kind of give that effect of um, the overlay. So about 20 pixels of padding on either side. Perfect. So get first dibs. Um, now that I see it, uh, the 20 feels like it might be a little strong. So let's just try 15 on each send, maybe even 10. Okay, there we go. Yeah, that feels like um, it's much better. And then outside of the SVG wrapper, so in the newsletter wrapper, I'm going to add a form block. All right, perfect. So all we need for the form block is we don't need the field label or the second line. So all we need are these two lines. Um, so let's go ahead and give this, uh, we'll call it newsletter uh, form input. And I want to make sure that the background is transparent. All of the box borders are off because it automatically comes with some borders. And then we're going to give it a 33% opacity line. Let's give it the blue and change it to 33%. All right, let's see what that gets us. I just want to make sure that it is blue. So if I make it 100, um, I guess that's probably really just looks really dark. Okay. And then I want to give it a max length of 408. Okay. And I'm also going to remove um, the padding on either side. All right, looks good. Um, let's mess with the uh, text. So it's 1823. And two pixels is fine. Proxima Nova normal. It's Averta. Oops, accidentally picked bitter. Averta normal is fine. And, um, it's our blue at 75. What I might do actually is um, come down to the border and go ahead and make it full blue. And then um, on placeholder, so this is the color of the placeholder right now. Um, go ahead and make it blue. Um, and then I'll set the opacity to like maybe 50% or something like that. Um, where's opacity? Here it is. Because I think 33 is going to be, oh, no, that's great. Um, actually, I don't want to do it here. I want to do it on the form. There we go. Okay. So next, with the whole form selected, I'm going to make this a flex box and set it to the middle. Um, and then let me get rid of the margins and stuff. Okay, there we go. And then um, let me set it to the bottom, middle, or top. I guess top works. Okay. So here's where it's going to get a little bit complicated. Um, so I'll try to make this pretty slow. But the first thing is we need, um, I think we already have that arrow here, link arrow. So inside of the form, I'm going to add that. And I'm also going to add a new div block and put both of these elements in there. All right. 
and then I'm going to call this a submit wrapper. So just FYI, this is something where um, uh, instead of having to create our own custom form, we're using Webflows, but they don't uh, they don't have an option for customizing this button. Um, so you have to have text and that kind of thing. And so just to kind of like game the system, so to speak, we're just gonna use a submit button, but hide it and make it look like our arrow is the submit button. All right, so what do I mean? With a submit wrapper um, set to relative, we're gonna call this newsletter button. And we're basically gonna make everything uh, totally transparent. And then we're gonna take, uh, we're gonna make it absolute and cover. And we're just gonna get rid of all this stuff. And then last with the submit wrapper selected, uh, we're gonna add, maybe what we can do is align stretch. I don't know if that helped. And then make this zero. Okay, there we go. With our submit wrapper selected, we'll give it the same border. All right, so now it looks like this is all on the same line, but they're actually different. Um, last thing I want to check is, yeah, okay. All right, um, so maybe the last thing I'll do is the newsletter button. I wanna give that a Z index of something ridiculous just to make sure it's on top. And, um, and then with the form selected, I wanna get a hover state so that when you hover over the form, um, the opacity will become over the form. Oh, geez. Over the form. There we go. On hover, opacity will become 100. And then let's go back to none and give the opacity a transition. So let's test this out. All right, so um, everything is working well. And uh, perfect. The submit button is working. The only thing that is kind of weird is the uh, this blue line stays blue right there. Um, unfortunately, I don't think there's much we can do about that, but I think it works. All right, so, um, so that is our newsletter CTA. Um, I'm just going to copy and duplicate uh, this. Um, if I take the first one and duplicate it um, and move it above our dummies section, now we have uh, this down below. And maybe the last thing I'll check. This has, this has a little bit more padding at the bottom, the newsletter CTA section does, um, than the regular sections. So I'm adding a combo class. Um, great, and we'll call this project three. All right, and then we're just gonna skip changing the photos because that's not really relevant to you guys. And then we're gonna add another section start this in just a second. All right, so picking up where we left off, we finished the newsletter CTA. I added the third project just by copying and pasting a section from above, updated the photos, and now we're switching to work on this kind of like last total projects call to action and the um, blog teasers. 
So I've added a fresh section for our call to action. Inside I'll add a container. And then um, since since this section, the full it's the full width of the container, I'll actually just add a combo class and call it um, total project CTA. Make a flex box and we'll want to align it to the middle. And then we'll just start adding elements. I'm going to add a div block that will contain our total projects. And this is, um, I think it's the same, it's an H3. So, um, heading H3 total projects. And then we'll just add a piece of text that says 23 and we'll call it number. Okay, and then let's go ahead and start styling our number. It's a Verta Light 56. Verta Light 56. We'll make it 1M. Um, is there anything else? No. So uh, with number wrapper selected, we flex that. Take the number and um, add 10 pixels of margin to the left. All right, and then inside of this block, I'm just going to add an HR line. And what I'll do is and we'll just expand it and then add a second one and then in between the two we'll add a paragraph width, I think we're going to want to match what we have up here, which is 626. Oops. Feels like it's a little too much, actually. Um, it's 409. So we'll just do 409 pixels. And with the whole um, container selected, I think we can just make it a uh, text align center. Okay. Uh, I'm actually going to duplicate this and just make a whole new class called um, Total Projects. P, change this to 409 because we need to add. 30 pixels of margin to either side. Okay. Um, I should have done that with the number actually. 30. And then the last thing is the view all now. So I think we can just copy this. Actually, what I might do is get rid of this and add it to the HR line. Alright. Um, that looks good. Let's make sure that our arrow works. And so now we can move on to the blog section. Oops. 
with the body selected, I'll add a section, put it above our dummy, call it section, and um, This has a, uh, a gradient, but the gradient stops at the bottom of this photo. So instead of applying it to this section, I'm going to add a dead block and call it um, blue gradient. And then um, it is our Winter blue. Okay, so then inside of the gradient, I'll add um, our container. And then we'll add this latest announcements uh, wrapper first. So, dead block, um, uh, white headline wrapper. And we'll add a H2 white headline wrapper. And we'll margin auto. Whoops, I thought that would work. Um, oh, it needs to be inline block. Okay, but the margin auto is still not working. Do the text align center that would work. So let's add a combo class, text align center. Okay, and if I do, I'm just gonna take this off because we don't need it. And then um, the background is going to be white, uh, 30 pixels top and bottom. and 60 pixels on the inside, and then we can give it a background of white. Oh. oh, I see. So this should really only be 10. This should only be 20. say latest announcements All right, and then 80 pixels let's make it 90 since everything else has been 90 um, and then inside of here we're going to put in a div block that is a flexbox column And then we'll add two div blocks. Um, blog flex child. And uh, I think we can just. Oops, my mouse stopped working. Oh, there we go. Okay. I think we can just steal this guy and plop him in there. for some reason. This guy. Um. There we go. You know what, I'm wondering actually if I could just use this over again. No, 
I don't want to do that. Um, I'm going to get rid of that and just simply add as, a, as an image. Alright, um, and then I'm going to call it project image so we can get our shadow. Okay, and then we can add all of our info on the right hand side. Um, so this is kind of like an eyebrow. Um, Trying to figure out if I used it previously. I guess it's this. 14. Okay. Yeah, so essentially it's just this, but with a different color. Um, so we'll just duplicate it as an eyebrow and steal this color child. Let's make it left and there's a little bit of padding at the top 40 and 80. So the flex child we can just add it there. Whoops. Never mind I don't want to do that. Um, I'll call it a uh, right block child. Okay. Yeah, I don't want to affect this one, so I'll just add a new div block and call it um, blog content wrapper. Blog teaser content wrapper and add it there. Okay. Um, so my bold feels like it's too dark. Oh, well, I guess it's right. Then this is an H3, which we can steal from right here. I feel like the line height could use a little bit of expanding. Um, wait, this is not just a bold text. Is that what this is? That's weird. Okay. I'm going to set it manually. Alright, there we go. H3. Um, let's try 1.75M. That feels better. And we'll get rid of this. Let's make sure that didn't adversely affect anything else. I think maybe here it did. Let's make this back 20. Okay. We can just copy our badges from up above and let's go ahead and seal the wrapper as well. And 
it'll be New York City groundbreaking. New York City groundbreaking. And then we need some uh, um, margin, but I don't want to negatively affect this. So I think what we'll do is just do a combo class. That's just 20 pixel top. All right. And then a large paragraph. So with the content wrapper, I'll add a paragraph. And just call it a uh, P large. It's going to be 22, I think it said. 22 light. Right, and then um, about 40 pixels. So I'll rename this um, extra margin. Perfect. All right, so that's kind of like the first uh, feature blog that takes up um, the whole uh, width. And then we have these three minor blogs. So Um, we want to do that outside of the blue gradient, though. Um, something is giving this padding. Oh, here we go. There we go. So in a section, I'll add another dead block and make it container. So now it's right below our existing one. And uh, inside of the container, we'll just do a new dead block called blog grid. And that blog grid is going to be 40 pixels from the top. Um, let's flex it, and then we'll add a new class called blog cell. Go ahead and expand it, and add three. All right, so next, we can just add an image. I can't remember; it's the curvy dark one. Okay. And um, there's, let's add 20 pixels of spacing on either side. Is that right? Yes. Not margin, padding. And then with the blog grid, add negative 20 pixels of margin on either side. Actually, I wanted to do project image. Um, and add the padding to the blog cell. Oops. We can just copy this whole div and add it inside of the blog cell. And then just get rid of this padding. 
and to add that little bit of margin there. So let's make this 60. Feels like a lot. Um, and just get rid of the paragraph. Okay, then if we get rid of these cells, we can duplicate that and have three. Go ahead and change out our images. And um, hmm. Maybe the thing I didn't do is wrap these in a link block. Now these are clickable elements. All right, and then the last thing is um, this little uh, call for all announcements. pixels of margin. So let's just add that uh, to the top. Alright. Let's get rid of this 30, this 30, and We can leave that third. Actually, we can leave this one too. All right, and then make sure this is still animated. All right, and then the last thing is our footer. Let's get rid of our dummy section finally. And we could add a final section. It's going to be our footer. Whoops. And go ahead and change it in the tags to footer. And just give it a class of footer. All right, so I'm just taking a look at this and um, let's start by adding a container. Container, and we'll call it footer container or add a combo class so that we can add that uh, one pixel HR line which I think is the blue at 33 percent okay and then for now let's add um, in the footer we'll just add 200 pixels of padding so we can see what we're doing so there's our blue line. Okay. And then what I might do is um, steal this blog grid. Oops. Okay, that's not going to work. Okay, but inside of the container, I'm going to add footer flex, and then footer child. Footer flex. Okay, so what I'm trying to do there is see this left hand side matches up with the left hand side of the middle blog. So just by using flex, we're kind of adding the space here, 
pushing everything to the right. Then we can steal our logo from up here. And um, let's oh, with the brand selected, we'll call it footer brand and make it horizontal. pixels of padding or margin to the right there we are and then um, we just need to add these two columns hmm I think instead of doing what I just did what I'll do is make this 33 percent basis make this 67 but give it maybe that 15 pixels of padding is it right okay feels like that matches up the um, reason I did that was because um, these are really their own columns okay and with brand selected, let's go ahead and add the 40 pixels of margin. And then we're going to add the footer column wrapper. Footer column. And then add three of those. stuff flex as well so that I can make it vertical and left aligned perfect I think you only need three right yeah all right so this is um, the h3 I'll just add that here heading h3 and it is projects All right, then we're going to add a text link. And add footer link as a combo class. So it's 16 Averta. Should be light. Creepers. Commercial. Residential and office. All right, and the reason that they're stacking this way is because they're set to inline block. So just by setting it to block, they'll stack on top of each other. And then um, we'll just kind of try Eight pixels. I'm going to call this footer column. So we can add maybe like 16. and give these um, an opacity of like 50% or something and then however it turns to 100. Go back to the none state. Okay. 
that's projects and all right I think with this what I might do is make it 100% width and make it um, justify space between or like that there we go footer column duplicate that and this about contact team Good. Um, next up, we have request. Cool. And let's go and get rid of these and add a form block. Instead of the form block, I'll go ahead and add div. Text fields inside the div block, and then name is inside the div block. Perfect. And we'll call this um, input wrap, form input wrapper. copy the styling from up here this letter form input and uh, we'll call this form label get rid of that pixels of margin and for right now I'm just gonna make it a uh, minimum 100 pixels and you'll see why in a second um, make this 12 12 seems oh a verda looks good. Um, and then let's give this an opacity of 33% and on hover 100. Actually, I don't want to do that. Just the input.
Okay. All right, so let's duplicate this. Uh, one, two, three, four times. And we need to give it a little bit of padding bottom, 20 pixels. So phone email message. Phone email message. Uh, I'm going to get rid of the message because it doesn't make sense to have it in the footer. This is important. It's important to make this email so that it automatically recognizes for you if it's in fact an email. And then let's go ahead and okay, that works. And I also want to make these a little bigger. So about three hundred. We'll get rid of that and do minimum 300. Okay. I think the last thing is we'll call this footer submit. that this is all zero. The background is transparent. Um, all caps. Submit. And then it has an arrow. Hmm, I wonder if it's semi bold. Yes. All right. And then, as a last element, it's telling us it has 230 pixels. Um, footer. I think the footer had the, there you go, so it's really 230. And then let's make, um, let's make the footer relative. We'll add a div block that is the angle cut footer. Absolute down to the bottom. Um, it's about four hundred and thirty three pixels. Uh, give it a background color. Actually, it's a gradient. E O E nine E E. Let's see if we've got that anywhere. There we go. All right, I think that does it. Um, let's see, index it to the back. And then if we do our skew, 
let's do it from the top left and skew. Let's try 10 degrees. Perfect. Okay. Um, and then with the footer selected, we can do hide that. And then the last thing we'll do is add our image. Let me go ahead and export it as a PNG. Oops, I don't think selected. Um, let me crop it first. What do I crop? and then export at 2x. Make sure it's PNG. All right, so here I want to add image load desktop building. Slide it into the footer. Um, call it footer image. And let's make it absolute and pin it to the bottom. Okay. But we want to give it a little bit of margin. Um, so this is about. So we'll just say um, 80. All right. Uh, oops, I just realized this is butting up against the HR line too much. So let us add 100. Everything else has been 90. I feel like these uh, are a little too big. Oh, it's because they're not supposed to be all caps. does it for uh, this video um, kind of achieve what we needed to um, maybe what I'll do is make the building just a little bit bigger um, so the footer angle cut is 433 so I think if we make the footer image like 466 it might just pop a little bit more Or, um, you know what, I just realized what I should have done is put the building in a, um, so originally I wanted this edge to line up with this. So I think what I should have done is add a new div block to the footer. Take away all this positioning stuff. Okay, add the footer image to the div block, and then create this as a footer image wrapper. Um, 
that we're going to absolutely position. Where's the positioning? To the bottom. All right, and then I need to add. A container. There we go. So that the image is always lining up perfectly with that. Lovely. Okay, now that makes a lot more sense. All right, so our website is built. Um, thank you guys so much for following along as we did that together. Oh, by the way, I um, I cut this out in Photoshop myself and I'm like the worst at doing this in Photoshop. So um, please excuse the rough edges. Um, but just wanted to say thank you for following along. Hope this was helpful. Um, if it was, please subscribe. Uh, make sure that you hit the notification button so you are um, notified of future videos. And um, also make sure to leave a comment. Um, let me know what you find helpful what you didn't think was helpful and um, ideas for what you'd like to see in the future. Thank you guys. Have a good one.